It is time for another week in the Amazing Readathon. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna, and this is For a Positive Book. I make bookish videos over here on my little corner of the internet, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below. It is week two of the Amazing Readathon, and it is time to continue racing around the world. Currently, we are on a stop three. There is a plane going over. Currently, we are on stop three, or leg three, so we are headed to Berlin. I stopped the vlog week one on Friday, so I was only a couple of chapters into Cassandra in Reverse, so if you want to hear my initial thoughts for this I'll go ahead and link up last week's vlog uh, there's also a little hint in there and there will be another hint for points at the end of this vlog as well so it's Saturday morning I am about 35% of the way through this and I think that this book has definitely has an audience for it I don't know that I am the audience however the representation in this book is really really good um, I sh they haven't like actually said that she is autistic but it's definitely hinting at that and she's definitely showing some of the signs of autism and some of the people around her have been like I think you're on the spectrum are you on the spectrum like kind of like making jokes about it it's kind of this very dry British humor which kind of like is hit or miss with some people uh, I think if it's done well I enjoy it it's very dry it's very blunt uh, and it just kind of takes a little bit of getting used to because I don't read a ton of books that are set in the UK she definitely has her like hyper fixations about things specifically Greek mythology and I'm sure that that's going to come into play at some point if you think about the name Cassandra and like who Cassandra was in the Greek myth probably gonna play a part in that being in her head is a little bit um uh, I don't want to say exhausting but it kind of is and not like not because of the autism like I don't want people to think that like as someone who is neurodivergent being in my head is like exhausting but that's not what I'm saying <laughs> the reason why I'm saying it's exhausting is because she's very unreliable in the fact that like she has no idea what is going on and it's like she doesn't know the rules to the time travel yet so there's there's that issue <laughs> and it's more of a Groundhog Day element in that like she's repeating the same time over and over like there's actually been a couple of chapters where she has repeated the same date over and over and over again and the chapter is only like four sentences long because like she goes to speak to him and she's like uh, I did it wrong let's try again and like rewind Groundhog Day is not necessarily my favorite trope I like when they play with time but Groundhog Day specifically if it's not done well can be really boring and so I'm hoping that as we get a little bit farther into this we um, we get a little bit of variation so I think there's a couple of hours left of sprints today and then tonight Derek and I are going out to Deer Creek to this restaurant that I found on Instagram actually um, called the lake house and it is on the waterfront and it's like you know supposed to be good I don't know found it on Instagram we're, we're gonna go try it out it'll be a nice fun like summer date night never been to California never been to LA so I'll stay home and write these songs pretend I'll make it someday Hello, happy Sunday. I wanted to touch base with you because I have finished Cassandra in reverse. I, okay, I'm gonna give it three stars, but I don't want people to think that that means that I didn't like the book. Personally, this is not like a, a genre that I would typically pick up. It's not a, a, a book that I would gravitate towards. I think that the um, comp to it being similar to Una Out of Order is not accurate <laughs> like it is in the sense that like she's living her life not in a linear timeline sure but I definitely think that the comparison title is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine not not Una out of order this like you have to like Groundhog Day if you're gonna read if you're gonna like this book which I feel like the middle got a little bit repetitive even the beginning like the beginning was a little bit repetitive too especially when she didn't know what was going on um I, I actually really liked the ending I really liked the discussions with her sister and like really coming to terms with who she was as a person um all that I I don't know I, I liked this I liked the ending of it and I really enjoyed the conversations about autism and Cassandra discovering that she was autistic um and I think that the idea of like tying this back into the Greek myth mythos and Cassandra being able to know the future but nobody believing her um like I don't know I kind of like liked that idea like in a contemporary setting but it's just like it's not it's not a me book it's not a Brie book 
this has an audience and um, I think that like the people that are that love it are gonna love it uh, but unfortunately it was not me we are dropping the prompt in about an hour and a half and I haven't done any sightseeing for this because it was a very short leg there are gonna be short legs based like because of the face-off weekend and we need to be on leg five by then uh it's a whole thing so anyways um i'm started new kid by jerry craft which is just a middle grade graphic novel that i've had on my shelves for a while um so i wanted to pick this one up i'll be able to get some sightseeing points for team fiction uh and then we will we'll just go from there i'm gonna finish it up in the next hour and then we will drop the new prompt and we will be moving on this next leg i am not going to be spinning my wheel i am going to be choosing myself i could have probably faked it and uh said <laughs> that i was like you know i spun it and oh no it landed on sci-fi i'm not gonna do that i'm actually just going to be on team sci-fi i haven't done sci-fi yet so it's still fair uh and then like five will be team spooky and the reason why i'm going to be on team sci-fi is because Brittany and i's book club is going to be on monday tuesday um and so the book that we chose fits that prompt and uh yeah it's gonna be a book that won an award it's gonna be team move uh it's gonna be like four we're going to paris so i'm gonna use that book and then my patrons are deciding which sightseeing prompt i'm going to use because i'll probably be reading it in tandem because i'll only be reading an unkindness of ghost during like the sprints so i'll need something to listen to during the day that's all i've got right now um i'm gonna i'm gonna go finish this i've got 16 minutes left in my sprint so we're gonna get a little bit farther in and i'll talk to you later all right hello it is sunday evening i wanted to touch base with you because we have moved on to the next leg but i did want to talk to you about new kid by, by jerry craft this book is is not meant for me is not designed like was not written for me this is a middle grade graphic novel that is very obvious that it's for the middle graders like this book is for the kid who's getting bullied in school and I think that there's a really strong message to this but like as a 34 year old woman I was just a little bit bored so this book is kind of meta in the fact that like the character is an artist um and so he has like his own graphic novel within the graphic novel because like this is not the art style of the book it's normally like you know, normal cartoon or like comic almost. But then he is this artist and he like that, this is what he does to kind of like disassociate and get away and like go into his own little world, right? So this book is cute. Uh, I am not actually going to read it though, because I, I feel like personally, I would end up giving it a low rating because I was just bored the whole time. Um, but this book is definitely one that like, a middle schooler would definitely see themselves in and so I don't want to like say oh this was not a good book but like it's not meant for me right I'm gonna put it in my little free library because there is one that's right down the street that is really close to like an, either an elementary or a middle school I can't remember I think it might be an elementary school I don't really know um so I'm gonna stick this in the little free library over there so hopefully someone finds it that will like actually like love it and we'll get something out of it because it sitting on my shelf is not doing anything. We have moved on to leg four. I am reading for team sci-fi like I said. Um, so the book that I'm going to be reading like as my actual city prompt is going to be An Unkindness of Ghost by uh, River Solomon. We picked this one for the Accidental Book Club based on like the prompt. I knew it was like I knew what the prompt was. Brittany didn't know what the prompt was so she was like pick a book. Tell me when those friends are. Cool. But because of that, because it's book club book, I'm going to be reading it half tomorrow night and half on Tuesday night. I know that the prompt is not dropping until Wednesday. Hopefully they know that too. Um, so I'm going to be using that as my city prompt, but I'm also going to be reading sightseeing prompts along with it. Normally I read my city book and then I move on to sightseeing, but just because of the way that this leg is working, I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> so because of that, just due to the nature of the prompt or the nature of the schedule, I am uh, I'm sightseeing at the same time. I just won't submit anything until after Tuesday night. We'll just submit everything together, but that's okay. So I did put up on a poll on Patreon. Um, 
I asked them, I was like, I was trying to be sneaky because I didn't want them to think that I was dropping this prompt because it's a little bit shorter. Um, so I was like, oh, I can't pick a sightseeing prompt. Like, which one should I do? Um, and so the one that won was foiling on the cover. And so I am going to be reading Reset by Serena Dolan. Um, this is a YA dystopian, almost utopian, actually. Um, so it's essentially this, this society that after the Great War or the, what's it called? The the last war. Um, and so after the last war destroyed most of the world's survivors from a new society in four self-sustaining cities in the Mojave Desert in the utopia of the four cities, inspired by the lyrics of Imagine and Buddhist philosophy, everything is carefully planned and controlled. The seasons, the weather, and the residents. To prevent mankind from destroying each other again, its citizens undergo a memory wipe every four years. A blank slate to remove the learning prejudices. With each new cycle, they begin again with new names, and jobs, homes, and lives. No memories, no attachments, no wars. So that's exciting. So there is also a secret organization called the Dreamers, and they believe that they can actually like dream up what had happened prior to the reset. And so we have one character who is a like a scientist. She's like, I do not want any emotional attachment, no connection, no nothing, like very much lives by the rules of the society. And then she meets Benja, who is a free spirited writer who has had these dreams. Um, she has these like, rem like she remembers something um, that could potentially be a past life, but she's trying to shut it down. And then Benja is this free spirited writer. And he has, um, he's been using his dreams to like, write and and create these stories and um, they are trying to meet the dreamers to like see if it's more than um, just like this you know fleeting thought. This was a book that I got in a book box a couple of months ago several months ago honestly um, I had no idea what the book was about. I got this one and the prequel and I went and did some google research on which one I was supposed to read first because like this is a prequel so like story-wise it comes after it comes before but I think it was written after then after this one I've been told you can read this one as a standalone but we're just gonna start at the beginning so I've only read like 30 30 three pages of this so not very far into it but I love dystopians um I, I actually really love utopian stories too that like where the utopia isn't as utopian as we are led to believe if you think of like the scythe series um very like I, I'm hoping that this kind of has a similar premise to it as well I will touch base with you as I'm a little farther into this um but we're just starting at this point hello happy Tuesday it's been a bit since I've talked to you but I have a couple of updates for you. We are on Team Sci-Fi right now and we're reading, uh, well, I'm reading two different things. <laughs> so my actual book for this is An Unkindness of Ghost by River Solomon. This is the book that Brittany and I are reading for our accidental book club. Um, so me, knowing that the prompt is not dropping until tomorrow, I also am sightseeing. <laughs> some stuff. Um, but let's talk about a couple of things. I think the last time that I talked to you, I had only read a couple of chapters. Now I only have a couple of chapters left. Um, so this is going to be for the book with foiling on the cover. Um, and I've been trying to read it here and there when I can. Um, I think it reads really quickly. What I don't know is like how good it is. Um, I feel like we are really falling into a like heteronormative slash monogam monogamy normative and is that a word um with this utopian society and so the idea is that every four four years um your mind is reset so you have new relationships new jobs new names new family like everything is different and the whole idea behind that is that if you don't have any memories you can't have any prejudices and so then therefore we wouldn't have a war because people don't hate each other because that gets reset every four years. And I think the concept of that is great, but the idea behind this book is that these two people are like remembering each other even after the memory wipe and that they like are destined to be with each other. And I think a lot of times when you have this idea of like a soulmate or like, I mean, I guess it's kind of like faded mates in a sci-fi element, um, but the whole thing, like there is a comment in here about like, um, you know, marriage is when two people will decide to spend their time together. I don't know, it just feels like that's, yes, that is traditionally what relationships and marriages look like, but we're in this utopian futuristic society and it doesn't have to look like that. 
but we've kind of just like established that that's what it is. There's very little queer representation in here. There's very few like there's not even a discussion about you know queer people or like what that looks like. I don't I don't know like I'm just like I'm I'm whelmed by this book um, because it just doesn't feel like we it just feels like the author wasn't creative enough. I mean like the idea, the concept behind it is creative, but when you have this like idea, like this utopian society, I talked about this in my my host favorites vlog when I was talking about the darkness outside us, so this is going to be a little bit repetitive, but like when you have, when you're creating a new world, a new society, new politics, new religion, new whatever, you can do lots of things <laughs> and we don't have to just have two people that happen to be a man and a woman be together. Like we don't, we don't have to do that. We could do so many other things and be so much more creative than what tradition and society and religion have dictated for centuries prior. So we're having this idea of like, well, we're gonna reset your minds every four years so you don't have prejudices. But I feel like the author has prejudices in like this idea of like, you know, our character is male and female, and that is how every relationship without the, throughout this book is, and it's very monogamous. Like what? Now I'm ranting. I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm disappointed in this book. I'm gonna finish it, and this will be a 500 point um, sightseeing prompt. But I am gonna finish this book first so that I'm not breaking any rules. And this is An Unkindness of Ghosts, like I said. This is our um, our book for the prompt of a book that won an award. This won the Stonewall Literary Award, I believe, is what it's called, um, for like excellent work in LGBTQ plus um, fiction. So this book is really interesting. And it's, I mean, it is sci-fi, but the sci-fi element of it is r really minute. Um, like, yes, we're on a spaceship, but that's not the point of this book. I feel like you could put this book in any setting and it would still be a similar story. It just happens to be set on this very large spaceship. Um, we were actually having a discussion last night on our sprints about what the size of this ship is because there are probably hundreds of thousands of people on it. Um, and I was like, oh, at first I was thinking like Starship Enterprise. And then I, I did math. Like I Googled shit yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so the Starship Enterprise, which is like, you know, well, relatively well known as a very large spaceship, it holds about 1,000 to 6,000 people, depending on which site you look at. Deep Space Nine, which is like the space station in Star Trek. That is about 10,000 people. And then um, the Death Star, which Star Wars, is like 1.5 million people. So that's kind of more of the size that we are looking at. Uh, and then someone also in the comments said that Babylon 5, that space station ship, I don't know, space station, um, was like about 250,000 people. So I think we're looking somewhere in that range more so than starship because there was one instance where they were saying that like 8,000 people were in one spot so we know that it's a really really big ship there are multiple generations that are on this ship and it's really interesting the discussions of classism and racism that are on this that are in this book um you know the discussions of like actual different languages being spoken on different decks and the higher the deck you are the more affluent the more well off you are the lower the decks they are the ones doing the more manual labor the medial tasks and stuff like that and it's very evident um in skin color and and, you know other aspects <laughs> which deck you're on <laughs> and this uh, spaceship has is basically ferrying the last of humanity to a new promised land because earth has been destroyed but the ship is very much set up like the antebellum south hence the lower decks and the higher decks and all that stuff hence the lower decks and the higher decks like you get the picture there's slavery on this ship and we're following Aster who is like uh, essentially gonna start a revolution start a rebellion and she is like she's been bullied her entire life she has been called terrible terrible things um and she ha is learning that there may be a way to improve her lot however that's going to include essentially starting a civil war that's where we're at i am on part three of this so i will be finishing it up in the sprints tonight um i think i have about two hours left of the audiobook the audiobook is fantastic highly recommend that um so i'm gonna finish that then finish up the rest of this maybe I can finish both of them tonight um the prompt is not dropping until tomorrow afternoon so I actually have quite a bit of time to like maybe even read something else I don't know we'll see um but that's where we are now 
and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go change because I got home three minutes before sprints started, so I'm still like in work clothes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go put on comfy clothes. I need to go un um, unbox my HelloFresh box. I thought we, well, we didn't cancel it, but I had skipped a bunch of boxes in a row because we just weren't using it that much. And I wasn't loving the menu options, um, but I forgot to skip this week. So I came home to a box. So I guess we have three meals. Yay. Anyway, that's what I'm going to go do. And then I'll finish this book. Hi. Hello. Happy Wednesday. Uh, we dropped a new prompt today and I want to talk to you about it. So we are moved on to Cape Town, South Africa. And the prompt is to read a book with nature on the cover. Now this is the fifth leg. So I'm reading for Team Spooky. Didn't have to spin for this one. Um, before I talk about that, I do want to quickly talk to you about Reset. Um, I gave it two stars. I didn't like it. Uh, <sighs> Listen, one person did talk about polyamory, so like there is that argument. However, the gaslighting from some of our characters about soulmates and like, I, I know the guy wasn't like supposed to be the main character, wasn't supposed to be like the good guy, but when he, he was like, I remember you from our past life or from our previous life and we were married. And so I did not have sex with anybody else um, because I was waiting for you. And she was like, well, uh, I have because that's a thing that humans do. And he goes, it's okay. I won't judge you. You didn't know. I almost DNF'd it right there. I know that he wasn't supposed to be like the main character guy, but I almost DNF'd it right there. I could not handle that. But I only had like 45 minutes left at that point. <laughs> it got two stars. I'm gonna unhaul it. And it's prequel. But that was a prompt and a sightseeing book for sci-fi. So now we are moving on to Team Spooky. Now I'm gonna try to do this fast because my camera is overheating. But this is gonna be the last leg that I'm talking about in this vlog because I'm gonna do a separate one for Face Off Weekend. So we're gonna have a little bit of a shorter vlog this week. It's fine. I put up a poll for my patrons yesterday and I just did emojis because I, by process of elimination, they knew I was reading for Spooky. So anyone not on Spooky, if I was doing points, would obviously pick the smaller one and the ones that would be on Spooky would pick the bigger one, obviously. So it was actually a tie between two of them. So I picked the one with a longer page count. That is gonna be The Clinic by Kate Quinn. This was the fog emoji and everyone was very confused about the fog emoji in my Patreon Discord. So I figured it was also a good opportunity for this. I've only read 30 pages, which is also chapter seven. <laughs> Listen, after reading like fantasy and like reading the Django Wexler last week that like the chapters were a thousand pages long, reading 30 pages, but seven or but six chapters essentially is a kind of refreshing at this point because I kind of need a change of pace. I need a good book. Do I think that this is going to be it? I don't know. I'm 30 pages in to a 400 page book, uh, 431 pages. That's cool. I <laughs> love that for me. I don't know why I picked this one but it's fine. I have a busy day at work tomorrow, but like not busy with meetings, just busy with stuff. So I should be able to knock this out pretty, pretty decently. There's a lot of sprints, so we should be good. This book is about Meg, who is a casino worker in Vegas. Uh, she's not on a great path. That's like her, her job is uh, catching cheaters and she pops a few, few more pills than probably necessary. Um, and her sister is actually in a rehab clinic, but then the report comes out that her sister died at this rehab clinic where she was going to, for her own drug addiction. Um, so there's whispers of suicide, but Meg can't believe it. She decides that the best way to find out what happened is to her sister is to check in herself, to investigate what really happened from the inside. Battling her own addictions and figuring out the truth will be much more difficult than she imagined, far away from her friends, family, and anyone who could help her. Could it be silent patient vibes? I don't want to say that out loud. I don't want to say that. Like I said, my camera is overheating, so I'm gonna go, but I've been trying to film a couple of things and I wanted to update you. So um, I need to go edit said video that I just filmed. And I will talk to you tomorrow whenever I learn more of this. Hello, happy Friday. It's Friday morning. It is nine o'clock in the morning. And I did in fact finish the clinic. I didn't touch base with you because I was up until like two o'clock in the morning last night, um, building the spreadsheet for face off. And uh, I, I didn't think it was gonna take me that long, but it did. And I read until about like 80% of this. And then I read the last like hour and a half um, this morning. I have not gotten much sleep. Like I literally woke up at six. <laughs> 
after going to bed at two. Um, so it's gonna be a really fun 48 hours uh, for face off. That's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna give this four stars. And I, I do think that this is entirely too long. What, almost 450 pages. This book is too long. And um, we meandered a little bit through the, the middle and it was like we had a really strong start and then a laggy middle and then a really strong end. Like this, it, this is a messy book. And I think that if you work in mental health, especially um, with uh, like people that are in rehab or working with drug addiction, stuff like that, I don't know that this is gonna be the best book for you because this book, you gotta suspend like so much disbelief. This rehab clinic would be shut down so fast in reality, um, that is that is the case. But like for a fun psychological thriller, I don't know, I just kinda, I had a good time with it. Could it have been because it was two o'clock in the morning when I was getting to the good part? Possibly. I am already delirious and I haven't even started Face Off Weekend, so it's gonna be so fun. My next vlog is gonna be absolutely insane. That is going to be the end of this week's vlog because Face Off Weekend starts in an hour and so I'm definitely not going to be able to get anything else read. I think what I'll probably do is during Face Off Weekend I will put aside one sightseeing book for Spooky. That way all the teams have been given like an equal opportunity as far as points and then we will start fresh with like six. That's going to be probably the goal uh, which like I, I feel like I'll be able to do because I can read a short book and still count it for a sightseeing prompt. Who knows? Uh, maybe I will find a five star because if I give a book five stars I can use that for the prompt. That's how that works. But just like last week I am going to be giving you a cumulative points update. So this is not necessarily for the legs. This is the overall points total. And a lot of this is going to vary between the legs because the producers that are sabotaging they are taking away points from your individual legs but I'm not subtracting, like if they are, if they sabotage your team, I'm taking a, taking away the points from the leg, but it's not getting subtracted from your, it's, it's getting ba added back in for your cumulative total, if that makes sense. So really the producers are only affecting the individual leg rankings. They're not affecting the overall winner at all. Um, so I, there was a little bit of confusion for that, but um, so there has been some movement and last week we gave fourth place out. So if you want to go check out that vlog, you can, but there has been some movement. So the team in third place is Team Spooky. That's where we're at going into Face Off Weekend. Remember, if you are in the Discord, don't share this information for the next couple of hours after I post the video. And then after that, just make sure that you spoiler tag things. I'm about to start my Face Off vlog because I need to spin for the team that I'm going to be reading for first and pick my book before the kickoff sprints start. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a really quick weekend vlog. And then we'll start back up with week three. Let me know your favorite book that you read this week. Regardless, of if you're participating in the Amazing Readathon, and if you are not feeling chatty, put the emoji for your team. That's all I have for you today. If you are new here and you have not subscribed, there's a little button that you can use to down below the video. If you'd like to hang out with me more, the links to my Instagram, Goodreads, Twitter, and my Patreon are linked in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. So you, this was temporary tonight, but you changed my mind like the weather. When I saw you wearing my sweatshirt, so I was here ready, terrified